Hey everybody, it's Amy Schroeder with Remax Real Estate 10 and I'm here with Kim Swan with Mortgage Investors Group. And for the past several weeks on Wednesdays around noon, we've been coming to you, talking to you about buying a home and what that process entails. Um, Kim has talked to you all most of the time for the past few weeks, talking about the application, pulling your credit, income, what kind of programs are available that put little or no money down to buy a house. So today we're going to talk about you found the house that you want to buy. What's the next step? So what that involves is actually putting in an offer on a house. And so there's a lot of different things you have to consider when you make an offer. Um, some of the things are, you know, how long has this property been on the market? Right now, homes that are in the 125 to about the $200,000 price range are selling very quickly. Uh, we have a shortage of inventory. Part of that's because of the season that it is, but part of it is just we don't have enough inventory available right now. So homes in that price range, especially if they're updated and they're move-in ready, um, those are going to sell within about 24 hours on the market is yeah. what we're seeing. Yeah. So. Um, you know, again, that's just an encouragement that if you do find that house you like, you might not want to say, well, I'm going to sleep on it because it may not be available the next day when you get up. Um, we have seen some that have went under contract as quickly as like two or three hours of being on the market. So um, that's again, why it's so important to be pre-qualified before you go out looking. So when you do find a house, if it's a, a hot property, you're not having to wait on that loan officer to get back to you. You know that you're good to write that offer. Exactly. So, you know, if it is a hot property, if it's one that like they're showing stacked on top of each other, um, you're probably going to be looking at a multiple offer situation, which means you need to put your best offer forward up front. Um, so are there other offers coming in? Is it a hot property? How long has it been on the market? How motivated is the seller? You know, have they got another house that they're trying to buy? Now, you're not always going to know what that seller situation is. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. But, um, you know, what are some things besides price that you can offer um, to sweeten the pot for the seller, so to speak, so that if you know there's three or four other offers coming in, how can you make your offer stand out? Okay. So some of the things that we write into an offer are one, earnest money. And Kim, why don't you talk to them a little bit about what earnest money is and how that needs to work for them. Sure, sure. And earnest money is kind of what we also call good faith money. In other words, you're putting money up front that says, hey, I'm serious about purchasing this home. And this is this earnest money that I'm putting up is proof that I, I, I am serious about purchasing the home. One thing from a lending standpoint that you do want to do uh, when you pay that earnest money is it's best if you can write a check from your bank account or, um, you know, I don't know, sometimes people don't even have checks, but, or if you don't have checks, you can always go to your bank and get like a cashier's check. That way, if the lender is required to source that down payment, then it'll be easy to be done. Um, paying cash for earnest money, having mom or dad write the check for the earnest money, those are things sometimes that can complicate the situation. Exactly, exactly. And like she said, if you don't have checks, because I know if you're like me, you know, you just don't write checks anymore. You use a debit card for everything. And unfortunately, and I'm not real sure why, most real estate offices are not set up to take debit or credit cards as payment for earnest money. So I think it's more about having a paper trail. So you would need to get, like she said, a cashier's check or something from your bank so that they can see where it came out. Um, so the amount of earnest money that you put down, um, if it's a $150,000 house and you're only offering $100 in earnest money, um, you know, that's not a real strong offer. So um, anything you put down as earnest money would get applied to money that you had to pay down at closing. So if you're doing an FHA loan and you're required to do a 3.5% down payment, if you put $1,000 earnest money down, that's money that you're not having to bring to close because you've already paid it. Okay. If you were doing a hundred percent loan through like rural development, VA, then you might actually get your earnest money back at closing. Um, if you work at the end of the, the seller pays the closing costs. So the amount of earnest money that you offer is important. Mm -hmm. um, home inspection. As a realtor, I'm never going to tell anybody you don't need to get a home inspection because 
that's an important aspect. There's always the element of the unknown when you buy a house. So I would not tell you to waive a home inspection to make a stronger offer, but I would tell you to offer a short home inspection period. I get offers on some of my listings and they'll write in, you know, 15 or 20 day inspection period. Well, you're tying up that seller's home until you get through this inspection process. So, you know, if you can do a seven day inspection period, yeah. then within a week's time, that seller knows, okay, yes, this buyer is going to move forward with this contract or they have found something in the inspection that has scared them off. Um, and so, you know, you can back out at that point. So the amount of time that you allow for your inspection period is important as well. Um, there are times that people will waive a home inspection. You know, I've had people who say, well, my dad's a contractor, or my dad's built a million houses and he's come out there and looked at it and he says he thinks everything's good. Well, that's fine, but that's on you because as, as your realtor, we would advise you to get a home inspection. Typically those are going to run, um, I'm going to say between 350 to $450. Uh, the actual amount is going to be dependent upon the square footage of the home. So that just kind of gives you a rough estimate of the home inspection cost. Um, the amount of time you need to close is also another factor that can weigh in. If you're doing a loan, if you're doing a conventional loan and you can close in 30 days, whereas the other offers coming in are going to be FHA, rural development, government type loans that are going to require 45 to 60 days, then that has strengthened your offer as well. So back when we first started this series a few weeks ago, we talked about there's a difference between being pre-qualified and being pre-approved. Pre-qualified means Kim's looked at your credit and she's going on faith that what you've told her regarding your income and your assets is accurate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Being pre-approved means that you've let Kim pull your credit, but then you've also provided her that documentation to where she can verify that stuff. So again, if you've got enough time between getting, getting with your loan officer and talking to them initially and finding a house that you can get them those income documents and the asset verification, then you're now pre-approved, which is going to make a bigger difference and it can help you get your loan closed quicker. Okay. So those are different things that, you know, you're going to think about when you're writing that offer. Um, it's not where, you know, you say, well, Hey, we really like that house. We want to put, you know, they've got it listed at 175. We'll give them 175 if they'll pay our closing costs. There's a lot more involved to it than just that. Um, in this market, most sellers are not going to work off of a verbal. They're going to want you to, to actually put a pen and paper together and uh, put an offer together that way. So um, those are just a few things to talk about. Next week, um, my goal is to have Gerald Jones with Bentley's Home Inspections here. And Gerald, if you're listening, put that on your calendar to be here next Wednesday at noon at Mortgage Investor Group. Uh, but Gerald can talk to you a little bit about what a home inspection entails, what he's looking for, um, and just go into a little bit of depth for you about the home inspection process. So again, we try to be here every Wednesday right at noon so that you can watch us while you're eating lunch. But these videos do save on our timeline. So if you can't watch us at noon, uh, feel free to come back, you know, whatever time during the day works for you. If you have somebody looking to buy a house, then we definitely hope that you'll tag them in this. Um, and thank you to everybody who has been watching. Diana, I saw you said good morning. Um, Scott, we appreciate you watching. You're very welcome. And Brandon, hi back to you. So we look forward to seeing y'all next week. Thank you.